so uh, good evening everyone uh, my name is janani jayaraman uh, welcome to itu's uh, new ritual event so this is a pilot program called as discover itu uh, so this event uh, presents to our students faculties and staffs to share their ideas and you know exchange their ideas um, explore new um, emerging technologies uh, offered by the university um it may be from blockchain you know to devops from artificial intelligence to cloud applications um check out our uh, career uh, new new or career opportunities in these particular fields um and in all related um latest technologies um and have an interactive session to take complete uh, advantage of this event from our domain experts so um this is the workflow for our event today so we are just quickly uh, going to have a small introduction about sga and then the speaker introduction and then the actual um um day where we are waiting for this presentation to hear about it's all about ai so we are just going to hear that from our special guest today and followed by the question and answer session and then the closing all right um so this is the agenda um so this itu uh, discover it program is mainly focused on these particular goals like um here career advices from the speaker because these speakers are well trained they are like have huge experience of these topics and they are like most of them are pioneers and our special guest today is going to talk about a lot of interesting topics i bet and then uh here are their uh, experiences and then have some networking with your friends and classmates and then this uh, particular event we are planning to uh, have every once or twice in a month every friday from 5 to 6 pm and this will be in a um, uh, virtual mode as of now all right so um this event is sponsored by uh, sga um as you know um my name is janani jayaraman i'm the sga president and um, uh i'm also the student assistant for sga so our motto is of the students by the students and for the students so promote sga participation is our uh, one of the main goal and then uh, provide solutions to various issues you know bringing a positive development of uh, all the students is our one of the main goals too and then having a, a vision for the prospect and the current students so these are all the things that we do in sga um so now i'm even more excited to introduce our uh, guest speaker here dr jahan so he's uh, itu's um uh, electrical engineering department chair uh he's a wonderful uh, ai expert um and the professor and he has received his phd from um british um columbia university um he has more than 20 uh, 25 years of experience in the industry experience and also served as cto for uh, a lot of startup companies um and he's very pioneer in all the uh, Uh, ai related um you know technologies like beat um, implementing or developing or um you know uh, designing so he's he's really good at that and then um some of his major uh, works are like um includes deep learning um using this tensor flow advanced machine learning um wireless communications um and dsp theory so um altogether he has more than 20 years of experience in academics alone so it's my honor and privilege to welcome dr johan yeah so um let's hear from him today now i'm giving the floor to you dr johan uh thank you very much janani for the introduction i would like to also thank you thank the sga for the opportunity It's always a pleasure to talk to students and share experience. I think this is one of the, uh, I guess, the rewards that you, uh, you know, get as an instructor, as a professor, and as a teacher in general. And uh, I have been lucky to have experience both in the industry at different capacities and also uh, in academia. teaching designing curriculums and uh, you know helping school and management of the school and uh, so this is uh, really a, 
uh, an honor for me to talk to students because students are the mission and the goal of the school is to provide a an excellent education for you guys you're you're the king basically for the school so um tonight's uh, topic as uh, was pointed out it's on ai and i rather than talking to in details about uh, ai uh, is I'll, I'll give you a general overview of artificial intelligence and then i will shift my talk towards what sort of skills job market needs in the context of ai and then i i'll try to relate those set of skills to what we offer at school in a program in the ai program which is right now offered as a concentration and very soon turns into a master's degree on its own. Uh, right now, the way the program is set up is that it's open to all the CS, software engineering and ICS students from the computer science including computer engineering and electrical engineering students. So this concentration, the courses, you don't need a special permission. You can just sign up for the courses. You can sign up for the whole concentration or you can just take a few courses. But let me uh, talk about uh, the details of... Uh, so I call the presentation basically uh, AI landscape and job market. And uh, so if you want to know AI, you hear this word a lot, artificial intelligence. The reason the artificial intelligence is mentioned is mostly because of the name itself has some historical reasons. Uh, the definition of AI or artificial intelligence was coined or was is now based on what's known as a Turing test, look it up. You know, basically the essence of Turing test is that uh, if you talk to a machine and you cannot detect that whether you're talking to a machine or to an individual, a human, this means this machine has passed the intelligence test or the Turing test. And if you cannot differentiate that from a real human, based on the answers that it provides to your questions, then we say that that machine has intelligence. And so the AI basically comes based on this, but there are variation and specific definitions that are subset of AI and that called machine learning or deep learning. And I'll uh, mention that, um, uh, that in uh, later, you know, a few minutes. One thing is that you hear the name a lot. You know that everywhere you go, you hear about AI or machine learning. And this, one of the key reasons that the word has become so popular, the discipline has become very popular, has to do with not only universities, which is the traditional place where new ideas flourish and uh, come about and uh, that's sort of the standard, right? Things to start, research starts from the schools and then it gets to the industry a few years later. In AI, this has been some kind of changed slightly, although schools are still heavily involved in the pushing the frontiers of this area. But one big difference is that the large big companies also are the drivers of this uh, of these uh, this technology and the new field names uh, such as google facebook baidu and nvidia and uber all of these companies amazon are actually using these tools to enhance their business to increase their business and finance uh, financial companies are becoming banks are getting into this so it's no longer something that is within the realm of research and universities. It has a lot of push and a lot of acceptance in the industry. 
And because of this reason that it's become now as part of the core technology, it's not something fancy anymore. Maybe 10 years ago, you could consider it as a sort of a pioneering approach. But uh, right now, a lot of companies, healthcare industries seriously have looked at it. And uh, there are a lot of implementation of AI in healthcare, in um, banks and finances and in credit card companies. So it's got basically it goes across the field. Um, it has, it's just shown its value. And uh, that's why companies are hiring a lot of people with this, with the proper skill sets in this area. Uh, one of the key reasons why AI has become so prominent and dominant in the industry as a sort of a major technology uh, in most industries is the fact that there's been a, what I call the big bang of data since the companies like Google and Facebook basically are riding on getting this data from their users. In two, maybe even 10 years ago, this was not as such a big item, but the reason I call it big bang because it represents that kind of change because big bang theory, right? is they say the start of the whole universe is based on Big Bang Theory. Now, this whole AI technology has ballooned and it's basically become in tremendously important just because of the sheer size of data that users are producing. And here is a quote from a, an older article, but if you just check the information on even trends into 2021, you'll see that the amount of data that we're producing is just increasingly large. And one, this, this part of it is interesting. So, so there's this, they say there's 2.5 quintillion bytes of data created each day at our current pace. And this is 2018. So if, if you look at this, values, it's been quadrupled. It's a lot more than 2.5 bytes of data per day. And if you just want to figure out what is quintillion is a one followed by 18 zeros. Actually in the United Kingdom, this word quintillion is one followed by 30 zeros. It just shows that's why I, I, I use the word Big Bang, because it's just the amount, sheer amount of data that gets produced is just out of bounds. The only thing that now, so we want to see why, if there's so much data, what is the role of AI in this? Of course, obviously AI needs to process this data, but you may ask, why do we need to process this data? There's a definition that if the data or what we refer to raw data as unstructured data, meaning that this data has a lot of stuff that are useless. There are some wrong uh, samples of data that exist in this. So data needs to be processed in order to be useful. The data that we get from social media, every time you say, I like this picture, I like that, this data gets processed and translates that if you are a female in your 20s and you live in that location, most probably you're interested in that kind of things. And they categorize it based on demographic and based on your uh, gender based on your background. If you say, yeah, happy Diwali, then they kind of process this information and they say, oh, this person is probably from India or, they, they, you know, this is what the data processing does. Uh, or if I say I like this or that, and uh, if they see uh, someone in, a, in their in an older age, in their 50s, they're buying little toys. Well, this guy is not probably going to play with that toy, but most probably they have either a grandkid or something that that most probably this toy is going to be suitable for them. So this is the meaning of 
data processing. And unstructured data is the click that I or somebody else may click on Amazon and buy something. But when it gets processed, they relate the sale to the background of the user that already has some information, age group, male, female, and the other type of location. All of this gets merged and processed into some useful information that that's why if next time I go and buy on Amazon, buy something, uh, they say, oh, are you interested in this new stuff coming up for Christmas? Or because I buy books, you know, and especially books that are related to my field of study. Next time a new AI book comes up and said, oh, are you interested in this? So this is basically role of AI in processing unstructured data. So you see that if, if there's capability for these companies to process data and translate that to money, basically what we call monetization, then this is it. Google is in the business of getting data. That's their, their key input or the key goal, if you will, is data, the main resource for them. Facebook, the same way, because they sell ads based on the profile of the users. The ad company said, why don't you put my stuff? I mean, our school also, you know, uses social media to advertise the school to promote the school and say, and uh, it's, su it's successful, right? These things work. So my point is that AI and with the combination of big bank of data has turned into a technology that is no longer something fancy or, you know, it's useful. It generates money for the companies. That's why everyone is trying to get into it. So getting into sort of a little bit of history, this, this chart from NVIDIA is a pretty interesting one because actually I uh, teach sometimes workshops by NVIDIA because I'm a, uh, what they call a NVIDIA ambassador. This means that I'm allowed to offer NVIDIA technology, bring it to school at no cost to the students. And you can get a certificate uh, NVIDIA certificate so we can put on your resume. But this slide basically explains the relationship between all these words that you hear in the context of AI. Artificial intelligence will be the umbrella idea that covers everything under the hood, basically. Machine learning, a, soft, a piece of software that learns pattern by on its own. So you feed it data, but rather than somebody sitting down and saying, oh, if such and such logic exists, do this. This is when a human imposes the logic. But if you're using machine learning, it means the software, the machine itself learns the pattern, those rules. And then deep learning is something that standard machine learning, basically the classical machine learning, falls short when the data size gets very big. The models cannot handle large, very large data sets. The data set that you collect, for example, from again, social media or uh, from the web. It's just the sheer size of data. The data set could involve billions of rows of data, samples of data. This classical machine learning cannot handle it. So in Late uh, around 2010, a lot of people from university and some people in the industry came up with new breakthrough algorithms that combined these new algorithms with the capability in hardware, which is a parallel implementation of uh, basically think about it as a parallel computer it, 20, 30 years ago, that was the size of maybe a room, now has been turned into a small chip. And those of you who have phones, basically like these uh, smartphones, those chip are the ones that are identifying the, your face and they let you in as a face ID basically. Okay, so this is called deep learning. 
And uh, so basically limitation of the classical machine learning, same idea software that learns patterns of the data on its own when you feed it data, but with combination of implementation on parallel hardware is what we call deep learning. And this happens only not that far out, you know, that far back, 2010, which is not that, as I said, a lot of you guys remember 2010, right? What is the AI process? So uh, the process of, if you were to think about the AI process, if you've taken a class in machine learning or data mining, you'll, you'll see this, uh, you've seen this uh, process before. But basically you need to collect data, then you need to process this data, turn it into structured data, what, what I mentioned briefly, clean it, prepare it, and maybe transform or manipulate the data. Then now this data is ready for building a model. You build a model, and this is the, uh, the, what we call machine learning algorithms. You build a model depending on whether this you want to build a predictive model for stock market. You want to look at prediction of social events, whether there's going to be, you know, a successful social program is going to be effective and how many people, uh, homeless people, let's say, are going to be, end up having homes because the government of California spent this much time, this much, sorry, resources on this, millions of dollars. They want to see, can this actually solve the, uh, the homelessness problem? Uh, whether you can want to identify, you have a self-driving car that is identifying objects in, in its view and trying to avoid them and get you from point A to B. These are where this data is fed to a model and the model basically gets trained. After the model is trained, then you say, now I'm in the production, uh, the prediction mode. So you say, okay, what happens if I show this data? So training means adjusting the model parameters in such a way that it can produce the, if you provide an input to it, it can actually produ produce a proper output or the correct output. When the model gets to this phase, it said this model is trained. Now you need to test it, meaning that I just show an input and I say, tell me what the output is. This is when you actually use the model in practice. So the training phase is something that happens in, in the lab or in, you know, on, on your computer in the company. And then when it's trained, you say, okay, now I going to test it and see whether it works for us. Can it tell us the price of the, the stock uh, of a specific stock? Can it, can it predict it correctly? And things like that. And then when you deploy it, when you deploy these models uh, in the field, you get improvements on this. You can improve it by saying, okay, it doesn't, it falls short in these areas. So this is the AI process cycle, if you will. If you want to develop an AI model, you have to go through this process. That's interesting, Dr. Jahan. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, are you sharing the um, presentation? Uh, you're asking whether I'm hearing my own voice or no, your I'm your voice or the presentation the uh, the slides are you sharing the slides I am sharing the screen oh okay so oh I think now I'm able to view it so earlier I think it was showing the age of um, artificial intelligence now maybe it just I think because but I shared but I shared the screen early on. I'm not sure if the others experience the same. Oh, now it's perfect. This is your okay, Dr. Well. Okay, Thank sure, you. No problem. Thank you. Now, AI as a discipline is a multidisciplinary field. And that's what makes it a little bit challenging. Uh, so what are the key skill sets that are required in a machine? And what I did was I went through some of the positions uh, that are basically advertised on uh, Glassdoor and Dice, all the job sites. 
and also I look at some of the articles and I also, you know, still are uh, associated or affiliated with the industry. I help uh, a lot of startup companies with their technology, as advising on the technology. And a lot of times they require, you know, job description. I, we want to hire or build a AI team. What sort of skills should we be looking for? And so this is based on some, my own experience as well. Uh, so what are the sort of skill set that normally jobs require? Machine learning algorithms, basic statistics, linear algebra and calculus, programming language languages, mostly Python. And I'll mention why the other, I put less emphasis on the other ones, although they're useful, but not as important as Python. R and Julia also are being used. You need ML and deep learning libraries, such as scikit-learn, TensorFlow, PyTorch. There are a few other ones that, but these are the famous one. TensorFlow is from Google, PyTorch is supported. These are all open sources, but uh, PyTorch is supported by Facebook. Then there are a couple of other stuff that I've put here and I've changed the color. They are shown as black uh, color. And these are general computer science uh, sort of skills that are still needed in the AI discipline, but they're not necessarily just purely AI. Cloud computing is something that uh, is also required. If you want to deploy an AI project, you need to know about co cloud computing. Then source control, you know, like GitHub and uh, similar uh, things is a necessary if you want to do because you're at the end of the day you're developing software so if you don't know how git works what is a commit what is a branching how that, those ideas work you're going to be in trouble uh contain con containerization ecosystem docker and uh, kubernetes uh, these are mostly DevOps tools, if you've heard the name, you're from maybe some of you have worked with it or familiar with it. But if you want to deploy something which is platform independent, then you can use these techniques. And any AI project that needs to be deployed in the field needs to follow one of these uh, or these these tools. You need to have some general um, database knowledge, whether is a SQL based or no SQL. Um, you need to have some understanding of uh, oper operating system, general idea of what is how the kernels work, what is a user space, what is a threat, what is the process, because at the end of the day, if you want to implement software in a parallel fashion, these ideas are crucial. Linux and bash scripting is important as well. You need to have domain knowledge. If you want to work in health AI application in healthcare, you better know about how the patient information is processed in healthcare and how diagnostics is done, things like that. If you want to work in self-driving car area, you need to know something. If you want to develop, you have to know the field, how, what sensors are used, how, what sort of algorithms are you for image computer vision and so on and so forth. Also natural language processing. If you want to write code for Alexa and digital assistances, you need to be able to take speech, convert it to text and make sense out of that text. And this is one of the key areas in uh, AI. The, the other area, which is again unique to AI is parallel computing and knowledge of GPU architectures. Uh, and there's, there's different versions. This normally requires either C++ or Python, specific Python libraries that allow you to write code for parallel uh, information. I took this from uh, uh, one of the, I think it was towards data science or one of the online uh, articles and it grouped the type of jobs that are available as AI in the AI area in general, data analytics, as data analyst, core ML engineer, applied ML engineer, and software engineer 
ml. And it counted five areas that kind of maps to these particular areas that I mentioned. Machine learning algorithms, math, Python, programming site, and implementation. And it's a nice chart because it gives you a good visual that if you want to work as a software engineer at ML, what sort of skill sets you need to have. You need to know more on the software side, fundamentals of programming. You need to understand less on the probability and the statistics. Still, you need to know enough to can interpret the information, but not as heavy as maybe a data scientist, for example. Data modeling, applying ML algorithms and library is significant, but not as important. System engineering and system design, these are basic software skills. So if you're a software engineer, you better know have these skills. And that's something that uh, I think Dr. Mamoun is heavily focused on trying to introduce the latest and greatest in these areas in the computer science department. Uh, Applied ML engineer is someone who's more towards the algorithm shifts, it's still very strong software skills, but shifts uh, a little bit more towards the algorithm and identification and less on the software implementation. A core ML engineer, which I call it data scientist, is basically as a one that is heavily focused on algorithms. Normally the people who work in this area have PhDs, but it's not a requirement. You still have, uh, but it's heavy on the algorithm side and that's where most of the knowledge of math is required. And then it says data analyst. I don't 100% agree with this approach that statistics is mostly used in the, for the data analyst but uh, I think the effect of math is heavy also on this side as well, on the data scientist part. But if you're just working as a data analyst, then these, uh, the data modeling part is, has a lot more importance than the software side. Again, some uh, definition of these terms, who's a data analyst? somebody who analyzes data and tell a story to produce actionable insights for the member of your team. So this person basically collects data, analyzes, cleans the data and analyzes the data. A lot of times visualizes, designs dashboards, but the key information is that processing this information and make it available for decision makers. Okay, uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, people in business school or data analytics area, they focus a lot of on, on this kind of aspect. The key thing here is that the analysis is performed by humans for humans. That's, I think that's the key thing. So a lot of the knowledge of the person uh, skills with the data analysis is pretty important in this area because that person is the one comes up with the features, important features. Uh, the machine learning engineer, this is here is defined as a general term, but this breaks down to software engineer machine learning. It turns into basic machine learning engineer, and uh, then it turns into a data scientist. So there's three categories under this. The machine learning engineer generates a software that basically uh, makes people who want to use the software, they can still get the output of the, these models and make a decision based on this. But the final product of a machine learning engineer is a piece of software. And uh, machine learning will basically is the software that pulls patterns or identifies patterns in the data. Uh, these uh, machine engineers, uh, machine le learning engineers are seasoned programmers. They're very good at programming. They are also familiar with uh, the ML workflow that I showed you earlier. And their focus is mostly on data side and the engineering, the algorithm side. They not, do not necessarily 
design new algorithms, but they make use of these a lot of machine learning libraries. The ones who focus mostly on the algorithm side are we call them core ML engineer or data scientist. And the software engineer ML is more on the software side where they're more familiar with the development cycle of the software and they are also familiar with the implementation on the GPU on the server side. So how to set up things, for example, a machine learning library on Amazon's service, AWS, for example. How many clusters in a distributed environment, how many clusters do they need and things like that. These are sort of the ones who are more focused on the software engineer. Now, why do I mention all of this? This kind of roles and AI positions are normally available in very large companies because the personality, the sort of responsibilities are very unique and specialized. So if you go with Google, there are some data engineers, there are some data scientists, and there are some software engineers that are dedicated to implementation of machine learning and deep learning algorithms. If you come to a small setting, you're talking about startups, you better have few of these skills to get put together. The more skills that you have across the spectrum, the better your chances are in getting a job in these areas. Because startup companies, normally they don't pay as well as a large company, but the experience you get in a startup company in a year or two is equivalent maybe to five or 10 years of experience. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know, in a short period of time, you learn a lot because you have to do a lot of things. Startup companies cannot afford to hire five people to deal with uh, you know, just AI. They want one or two AI engineer that they can do all the work. So if you're thinking in terms of job market, first of all, I think you should seriously consider startups because you gain a lot of experience. Secondly, the although the risks are high, but the opportunities are also pretty good. And the most important aspect of it is that you get to do a lot of things that in large company they don't uh, you don't get a chance. Large company have their own benefits. Normally, they have a well, uh, you know, well uh, package in terms of employment package, salary, base salary, and things like that, insurance and things like that. The, basically package is pretty good. And uh, there's a lot of system in place, meaning that if you wanna learn how to develop real software in companies like Google and Facebook and Microsoft, you definitely learn that because they worked on these processes for a long time. But then your knowledge becomes limited because you do certain things for a long period of time. So here is just, uh, so I talked about this as well. And now I want to basically add, since I talked about the sort of general skill sets that are required in the AI field, I want to talk about the program that we have on ITU. And I want to basically show you how these classes that we have put together, courses, map to what the industry needs. For example, we have a advanced Python application. This is different than most of the Python classes you've taken before, because at the beginning they cover the basic Python, but it gets to the advanced uh, concepts such as um, decorators and generators. That's more advanced concept in Python. And then it gets into web scraping, how to go to a Twitter API and gather data. Why? Because this is one of the things is that you have to collect data in order to build an AI model. So this is part of the things that we've put. It's not just a Python course. It's a Python course that's designed to teach you how to scrape data from the web. And beyond, in order to do that, you need to understand some URL library, URL lib. You have to understand how to use HTTP protocol in the context of Python. You have to understand this client server model. 
you know, these are distributed system, or if you take a networking class, these are the stuff that you learn in that class. But in the advanced Python, it's focused on this kind of thing. And what kind of skills? Python, data scraping, and visualization. This is some of the skills that you would need as an AI engineer, and it gets taught in this class. I've taught this class myself, and uh, it's I highly recommend it. Uh, to, to uh, those who are just interested in learning Python, this is one good class that you should really seriously consider. We have another class that basically covers the statistics, linear algebra, and uh, your calculus reviews that, but all of them with the focus and implementation using Python libraries to do this kind of thing. Because if you wanna do data analysis, use the statistics, in your AI model, you better know how to, you should have the right tools with it, not just on the piece of a pen and paper, but you should be able to do it within a program so that understand what descriptive statistics is and how to use them in order to build your data to your model. We have the basic machine learning fundamental class. This is again, goes back to this skill set that I mentioned, machine learning algorithms. It teaches you that. And uh, it's just the absolute necessary to, if you wanna get into this field. Then we have another one that talks about deep learning. I'm teaching this class this term myself, and we have a very qualified instructor for next term. But this basically teaches you advanced algorithms, but it also teaches you the frameworks, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, and again, and some GPU optimization, how to run these advanced algorithms on GPUs and parallel uh, compute uh, hardware. Reinforcement learning, uh, again, using PyTorch. This is again, shows you the teaches you frameworks and this reinforcement learning, uh, it's a very interesting and although an old, uh, an old concept in the optimization, but it's uh, new, very new, and by combining it with AI and deep learning. And it's the, this, this algorithm is, uh, this field is responsible for the alpha go zero, I think about two or three years ago that a computer played with the world champion, go champion. And four out of five, the machine using reinforcement learning beat the, world champion. Natural language processing, I briefly mentioned to you, it's basis of all the chatbots and digital assistants and a lot of other things because every information that you collect, data you collect from the field, uh, from the web is based on text. So you need to convert this text into data and feed it into your algorithm. We have a parallel implementation of ML algorithm with GPU. This is directly talks about GPU architecture and how you can take advantage of implementing things on parallel hardware. We have two application classes. One is mostly designed for engineering. This next term in the spring, we have the advanced computer vision class and the next term, the application could be focused on self-driving cars, or it could be focused in cybersecurity. Every term, the subject could change. We have also an application development in business like FinTech and algorithmic training. These are very popular, popular portfolio management. Again, a lot of AI algorithms are now deriving these areas in finance. And then the last one that I have here as electives is the one that focuses on DevOps and Dockers and Kubernetes, Edge AI, how to design a AI algorithm that you can run on your iPhone app, basically, and uh, use the backside or the back end of it to run your algorithm, AI algorithm, deployment in the field. And if you look, all of these, the green stuff is basically is a mapping of the courses we have designed uh, to those skills that are based on job market requires. In terms of uh, 
there's a lot of demand. A lot of companies are getting into AI. And now, because some parts of this algorithms have become commoditized, meaning it's a, you buy a tool or actually open source tool, you it's available. You don't have to write the algorithm, but you need somebody who understands these algorithms to make use of it and know this one works better in this area compared to the other one. So it's less important that you are original algorithm designer, but more important that you can use the algorithms and know what is the advantage of one versus another. Because companies like even Sephora, which is a makeup company, now is using AI to in their you know, stores to show how to put makeup on once they take a picture of a person's uh, face and you say, I want to use this kind of highlight or I don't know, this kind of foundation or whatever, you know, the, the different types of makeup that I have no expertise in, but you can basically say, apply all set of these set of makeup to my picture and you can see how you will look like. This is AI, right? So, so it's gotten out of just the, you know, the, university and academic uh, kind of environment. And that's why there's a need for people in this area. Uh, this uh, companies like Google, Facebook, Uber are hiring people. Of course, you have to have the right set of skills. Don't think that if you take one class in AI, suddenly you're an expert in this area. This actually takes a lot of effort because of its interdisciplinary nature, but there are a lot of opportunities out there. How to become an, an uh, ML engineer? As I said, you need to have minimum of one course in, in each of these areas. And if somebody tells you, come in within two weeks, I'm going to teach you, oh, you're going to take this workshop and you turn into an ML, uh, machine, machine learning engineer, don't believe it because it's hard to basically gain that, you know, all this interdisciplinary stuff in two weeks. So most people, they either spend about a year, year and a half, or do a degree in this area, and then you have the basics at that point. The key thing is that if you are taking this as a degree, whether at ITU or elsewhere, you should be focusing on doing projects because that's where you learn. The problems get to a size where it's manageable and you need to have a very good programming skills definitely no python and here are again some uh, i took some data from the web that they identified these are this is eight billion dollars in this particular area so it's eight thousand uh, million which is eight billion image classification and tagging algorithmic trading this is finance around seven billion Efficient, scalable processing of patient data. This is healthcare. So you can see that the top three, uh, healthcare, finance, and uh, engineering face, face recognition. And um, I, you can read the rest of the stuff, but I just want to so, show you that right now, data analysis and machine learning is becoming something that is like basic math and English for elementary school. If you want to work as an engineer, as a software engineer, you have to know some basic machine learning. Even if you don't want to get into the field, you may end up writing software that involves some data processing. Then in terms of penetration of artificial intelligence skills by country, look at these five countries in, in US, 100% is getting everywhere. China, very interesting. I was attending a conference in Guangzhou two years ago. And in that province, one state, there were 8,500 companies that were sponsored by the government that uh, were just in the AI area. I did another, maybe some other time, uh, I will 
talk about that. I did a study in India as well, the role of AI uh, in, in jobs in India and is getting a lot of attention over there as well. So India is one of the countries that is putting also a lot of effort in integrating this uh, technology, Israel and Germany. And here is some deployment. Look at the organization, external communication, chatbots, HR and workforce management. Very interesting. This is one of active areas where AI is getting into HR, figuring out why people are leaving uh, the company and who should we hire in terms of talents. And you can go through this. This is environmental. This is uh, logistics, supply chain management, uh, transaction, uh, production, and mo uh, fleet management. Anyway, I wanted to sort of wrap it up at this part and open it up for the class. And my apologies that I went over uh, time a little bit, but uh, we still have time, so. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. That was an amazing uh, presentation, Dr. Jaham. We seriously learned a lot. Uh, myself being a computer science engineer, I know a lot because <laughs> I know a lot what I should learn from the MI, MI perspective. So if at all, if I don't want to get into MI, so now I know that at least I need to know some basic understanding of right. um, what should I know about AI. So um, speaking of which, um, so right now is the Q&A session. We still have 10 more minutes. Um, I would like to open the floor for any of the students. If you have any question, please, um, you can since it's like I think less number of students you can ask him directly so any of you I have any questions so I could see like five participants here um, if there is no quest questions I think um, I have some questions uh, which has come to SGA email uh, we can go through sure. that Second call, people. Any questions to ask him? Oh, I don't have any questions, but it's always oh, nice to hear uh, from the professor. I have even attended one of his previous uh, workshops in uh, deep learning. Uh, it, it's always great. You know, it's always nice, great to attend his uh, sessions. It's very. Uh, I get a lot of information from uh, from him. Thank you for sure, today's sure. session. Uh, professor, thank you. Uh, it was really very nice session. I just took uh, in that semester basic uh, machine learning course. Uh, I'm basically from computer science background. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in computer science, but I took the machine learning and we have the different projects in it. So I choose a topic related that uh, to identify the uh, any of the celebrity image and I use that um, basic uh, SVM in that. Very good, excellent. Uh, yeah, good I just have a question that uh, uh, if I want to choose that basic AI, then uh, what are the different softwares I need to learn basically? That means that, uh, that means I learned the Jupyter Notebook, Python and uh, According to you, what are the other necessary things that I need to know? Okay, so I think it's important for you to learn to definitely the next class is called deep learning because a lot of tools that are currently used in the industry and are based on Python. So the fact that you know Python, it helps a lot, but those frameworks speed things up. For example, when you learn about neural networks, there's a technique called backpropagation that you have to take the derivative of data. Okay, okay. derivative, it's a hard calculation in general. These framework, they simplify and speed up this calculation. And you don't have to really get into the nitty gritty, but you can definitely use those, for example, TensorFlow or uh, PyTorch to speed things up. So 
And these techniques are incorporated into the course, meaning you learn it not as a separate course, but as part of learning uh, about uh, the course itself. And so that's very important that learning the tools and also learning the basic algorithms, ability to read data and do basic data analysis is also very important. Uh, a lot of times large data sets, you cannot fit it into a file. So learning how to use to access SQL databases or NoSQL database also is another set of skills. Basically the program that we have at ITU is designed in such a way that you walk away with most of the key skill set that's required. Because right now, as I said, I consult a lot of companies in order when they're interested in adopting AI technology. And a lot of times I end up interviewing the candidates to help them out. I, and these are the type of questions I normally ask. Okay, do you know Python? Say yes. Okay, so if, say if, if the person says yes, then it's not that that's not the end of it. I said, can you actually show me how to use a decorator, for example? So if you have never heard of it, you get stuck. If you don't have enough exercise. So taking a class and working on those things so that you learn the skills are the sort of key things. So you have to be good at this so basic stuff. But programming is one aspect of it. Algorithm is another aspect. You need to know some math. And uh, you also need to be able to learn how to deploy these things. You build something, an algorithm works really well, but if you want to put it on iPhone, you don't have five hours of training. So how do you do it? There's something called TensorFlow Lite that would allow you to incorporate that on the, like an embedded processor, uh, Raspberry Pi, for example. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You so much, Professor, for that. So uh, I have two questions. I'll quickly go through them. Sure. So uh, this is from one of our students. So he asks, to what extent, extent do you predict that AI will be uh, replacing jobs? Has it started happening already? Yeah, I think it will definitely replace some jobs for sure. It's already done so. And some of the jobs have already disappeared. You know, if you look at Amazon warehouses, a lot of these robots are running based on AI. Okay. But this doesn't mean that actually AI is supposed to, there is a study that shows the number of jobs that AI generates is a lot more than the jobs that it eliminates. So this means that you need as somebody who's in the industry, you need to sort of update your knowledge. That's why I mentioned earlier, even if you're not interested to become expert in machine learning, you should take a couple of classes to understand because you may develop, you may, you may be a full stack developer, but the full stack, the application you're developing is using an AI engine the back, on the back end. And you need to understand some basics when they say, oh, here are the training parameters. You better know what those are. Otherwise you won't be able to write the proper requirements for your software. So as I said, it's becoming more commonplace and you need to know the alphabets as a minimum, the terminologies and understand how it works, the mechanism. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So one, one last um, question. So, uh, what, okay, so that one, all right. So what values can Python or AI bring to the organizations? And is there any disadvantages? Are there any disadvantages to using AI? Is that the question? Yeah, I think, I think that's what the question is, yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. Actually, there is uh, some discussion on this as well. It talks about the uh, ethics in AI and bias in AI. What that means is that if the type of data that you collect is geared towards uh, a certain demographic, regardless of how good of an AI algorithm you use, the output is not gonna be 
general. They have done similar things in medical studies and clinical studies. They've only studied the Caucasians for development of a drug. Now, this drug, blood pressure drug, does not work for Asians. Why? Because the subject of the study was, they just focus on one group of people. So you cannot use the same thing and give it the rest of them. So AI is actually, is could run into trouble if the data that they're collecting is biased or the person who's collecting the data has its own or her own biases. Because models are as good as what you train them with. So there is a potential for sure. That's true. That's true. Completely agree that. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jahan. We had a really a full informative session for this one. Uh, uh, thank you so much. We would like to hear a lot of uh, more, more information from you. Maybe in the next episode, let me try sure. to you in some other episode. Thank you so much for today. And uh, thank you so much for all the students who have joined today. Thank you. Sure, by all means. And uh, I was happy to attend. My email is there. So if anyone is more interested or more asked questions, you can use my ITU email to reach out and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank oh, you. Professor, before you end, uh, would you be conducting more of those uh, workshops uh, from NVIDIA in future? Yeah, yeah, I will. I will definitely have more workshops, NVIDIA workshops. I'll make announcements in classes and at ITU through SGA so that everyone is uh, has access to and you know ahead of time, for sure. Yes. Uh, I would really appreciate uh, if, uh, if you could share it uh, in emails for all batches. Sure, sure, if definitely. Thank definitely. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jaram. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye now.